All right, hello and welcome to another Unity tutorial on uh, cloning Hotline Miami, basically. Uh, today we are going to be going over the enemy, well, we're going to be start, it'll be a couple of episodes on the enemy AI. So we already did the uh, health uh, last time, the, you know, you can shoot them and attack them and knock them down and whatnot. This time it is going to be movement, so basically what we're going to cover is them patrolling around the place and then if they see the player they're gonna like chase them and run towards them. Okay so I'm just gonna show you what it is basically we're doing. So you can see here he's going I'll just follow him. You won't see us because we're sneaking up behind him. And he gets to the wall and turns. Boop. Yep, and that's yeah and see so him. But he if we like this, he sees us. If we get break sight, he goes to the last place he saw us. And if he doesn't see us, he just uh, sort of goes back and starts patrolling again. Since they've seen us, they see us, see us, see us, see us. Right around the corner, and he doesn't see us anymore, so he just goes back to patrolling. But yeah, so, and there's one other thing. We added, I uh, added in the, I uh, added in walls, which are, these are basically just walls. Uh, so they're like a sprite, they're basically just a box collider and a rigid body that's kinematic. But there was one change I made to the bullets because they weren't colliding with these at first. Uh, it's They are now not kinematic. So basically, it, if they are, they don't collide with the walls, but they do collide with enemies because they are kinematic as well. No, they're not. Oh, well. Yeah, so basically walls are kinematic and bullets are not anymore. Does he get change? Uh, so I'll just show you the walls as well. I don't know why, but yeah. Look, bullets hit walls. Sometimes they go through, but most of the time they're just fine. And uh, you can see, shooting the enemy, kills them. Right, let's open up Mama Develop for enemy AI. That was the one. Uh, and I should probably show you the enemy health one. Well, health one as well. Basically, it's just got a extra condition to. I'll show you it. Like, I'll just stop talking about it and then show you in a minute. Uh, I want to develop, don't be a dick. And yep, it loaded up fine. Enemy AI, weapon attack, enemy attacks. So, like, basically, it just has the enemy AI script here and here. If it's if they've been killed, it'll just disable it permanently. But if it's just knocked down, it'll disable it, then re enable it when the, player get, the enemy gets back up. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the change I made to that. Uh, was there anything else? No. Alright. Oh yeah, there was one change, sorry. Uh, Raycasting, I have changed the layers. They added custom layers to the player and enemies. So player, as you can see, it's on layer player. Which you can see is layer 9. And... The enemies are on layer 8, so that's just people other than the player. And this is reflected by using a layer mask for rate. This is just a change to the ray casting of how it navigates. So, say on weapon attack, I'll show you an example. It'll got the layer mask. Where's the layer mask? Layer mask, layer mask here. So, it's got layer mask from 1 to 9. I think that's a bit something or other. Yeah. Basically, that. Basically, this is saying it wants to, I think it's saying it wants to collide with every layer but number nine, because that's the one that player was on. And previously, there was a problem where the raycast, once it was sent out from the player, it would hit the the player's collider and say it was just so hitting that and couldn't detect an enemy. But now with the layer mask, it ignores the player's collider because it's on that ninth layer, as I showed you there. And it'll hit everything else. And there's a similar one for the enemy, which I'll go into when I get to that bit. Right. So basically, we've got a couple of settings. Basically, there's three uh, conditions that are uh, modes, probably the better word for it, that the enemy AI can be in. They can be patrolling, where they will walk around the map, and if a little ray cast that's drawn in front of them, so you can see how there's a turquoise line here. Every time that line collides with something that's like a wall, 
it will turn. Uh, you can set it either right or left, 90 degrees. And that is basically just used to simulate the patrolling that's used in Hotline Miami. So that is done. Basically, it just fires a raycast. We call I've called it hit two at the moment. So it trans from its position uh, in the transform that transform direction vector three dot right. It's right because the sprites face right, and it uses the layer mask to ignore its own collider for it, and it sh it fires a raycast for a distance of one. So it's like directly in front of it by one unit. And it's just debugging to, so we can see the ray in the editor. And basically, if it hits a wall, uh, so you can see these objects here, they're all tagged wall. And if it'll, if clock, it'll transform, go either 90 degrees clockwise or anti clockwise, depending on it, and set the rotation for it. I don't know why it has a rot actually. It doesn't need that. Uh, yeah, and so yeah, that's how the movement works. This second, this well, the initial raycast here is just, this is fired between the player and the enemy, which is used for detecting the player, which I'll go into later. You just saw it here at the moment and it draws it as well and gets the distance between the player and the enemy. Uh, it has a Boolean for to check if moving is true. So basically, if it is moving, this will be used for animation and stuff. It'll just move times this, move it in right to the three dot right, which is essentially forwards times time dot delta time, which keeps it in sync with the frame rate and the speed, which is changed when it goes into the different states. So if it's pursuing the player, it'll be faster. If it's going to where it's last seen the player, it'll be three, so it'll be slightly slower. And if it's patrolling, it's just two. Speed. Uh, okay. What else? Uh, what else? Uh, Alright, pursuing player. Basically, it'll just move towards the player and it'll set the player's last position. While well, it can see the player with this hit collider that's drawn between it and the player, if it's hitting the player and not like a wall or any object in between it, it will set the player's last pos position as the player's current position. But as soon as that stops, it doesn't know where the player is anymore. So it'll just go to that player last pause. And if it gets and it'll, if it gets there, it, uh, it and it still can't see the player, it'll just return to patrolling, which is done here. Basically, it just uh, yeah. Uh, this rigid body dot transform at Euler angles is literally just for setting the rotation of the object, and it just rotates it towards the object you want it to face. So, in this case, it's the player's last position. And it doesn't really matter in the movement one because it's literally just going forwards, then rotating 90 degrees. So it doesn't really need that rigged up transform the Euler angles because it's not doing proper rotation. All right, and now we'll go on to the player detection. So basically, it fired the, there are a couple of bits for the player detection. Uh, the position is just this is like the position of the player relative to the relative to that particular instance of the enemy so uh if the x is more than 1.2 it's sort of like in an arc in front of the enemy so i wonder if it'll be a, i'll open gimp and show it to you uh, that's not it uh, GIMP. Funny name for a thing. Okay. Uh, let's close that. Okay. This might take a while, but yeah. Uh, new. Okay, whatever. All right, so say this is your enemy. And basically this is like their cone of vision. And since this is like vector free dot right, because the sprite face is right. But if the player is within this area here, it can be seen and the X value will be more than 1.2, else it can't be seen by the enemy because it's out of the cone of vision. So that's how that sort of works for the detection. So if it's here, it can be detected. If it's here, it's not, even if the raycast that it fires from it to see if it can see is, uh, even if it can hit it, it won't see it. Okay, and that will change when it rotates 
Like, so it, I, it won't change, sorry. It'll still be 1.2, even if it's facing up, down, left, or right. Yeah. Uh, so if it, the player is in the cone of vision and there's not like a wall or anything in between, and the distance between the player and the object is less than nine, it'll set patrolling to false and pursuing player to true. Just spat on my screen, that's fun. But if if it's tr if it can't be seen anymore, like if one of those conditions isn't true, because all three have to be true for it to pursue the player, then it'll go to the last location and start pursuing player. And if like it gets to the last position and it can't see the player anymore, it'll just return to patrolling. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, is there anything else? These are just the variables declared to use. So I'm just going to scroll through this slowly. So if you want to get anything copied down or read it, whatever, go do that. This, uh, the layer mask, this literally just inverts the value. So this would say, like, you can't hit layers 1 to 8 or 1 to 7, I think it is. It, this mean, basically it means it only hit, uh, it only hit eight, and by inverting it, it means we'd hit everything but eight. So that's what the little squiggly line is. Uh, so yeah, so that's the first part. Movement subroutine and player detects, and yeah, that's it. Let's uh, see. Yep. You don't need that. It's just literally just disabling the component in the enemy AI component. Uh, we will be working on this enemy AI script for a couple of time uh, for the next couple of episodes because we've got to do things like uh, what is it? Picking up weapons, like say you've punched an enemy and they've dropped their weapon, they'd have to find one again and pick it up. So we'll have to get yeah, uh, find a way to. Like have an array of weapons and check if the players are armed. We're gonna have to do attacking to see if like it's got a gun or a <laughs> melee weapon, sorry. And if it can find uh, like and we'll have, probably have to have a separate variant for you know the enemies that crouch down and then when it can see the player they crouch up in the stationary. Yeah, and um, Guard doesn't do anything actually at the moment, so that'll probably have to change. It'll probably just make moving false or something. But yeah, uh, what else? We'll also have to have a separate variant of this for the fat enemies. You know, the hench ones that can take more than one shot. And yeah, I think that'll be it. And yeah, uh, was there anything else I did? No, I do not think so. All right, so thank you for watching. I will just show you one last time. Uh, I'll just go around and kill some enemies. Oop. Still not added in uh, executions. Come at me, bro. Yep, you're dead. All right, so cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that. Go play my game, Loud or Quiet. It is out on it, the like a demo is out on itch.io and I've got big plans for it, but uni work gets in the way and coursework and stuff, so development is having to slow down for a bit, but I'm working on some stuff for it, just designing how it's gonna work and whatnot. So yeah. Bye.